thirty-five thousand bucks, and you can have a fighter jet. Hello and welcome. My name is Jimmy. This is Jimmy's World. This is where we have some fun with airplanes. On a day like today, where I thought everything was going great until I looked at my bank account. I give myself therapy by shopping for airplanes that I'll never own. And today, I think we're gonna do some fighter jets. How awesome is that? Today is going to be a great day. I've got my I wear this shirt to win and crack and open it do. What's up? Let's do this. Oh, let's see what's on the computer today. Let's check the bank account. Oh, well, that sucks. Now I'm depressed. I'm going to go shopping for stuff that I'm not going to ever buy. But I'm not going to do like if you're going to go shopping and do window shopping, you got to go big. Don't go searching for any little Cessna 150 or some little thing like that. No, if it doesn't have seven, at least seven digits in the price, I don't wanna look at it. There are 10 fighter jets, like legitimate bomb dropping, you know, top gun flying fighter jets that you can buy as a private individual for sale right now. Let's go check them out. Coming in at the cheapest by far is the Aero L29. You can get these things all day for, here's one listed at 35,000. This, this is definitely the cheapest one. I don't know if there's something wrong with it or what, but this fighter jet's cheaper than my Cherokee. I've seen these things listed all the time for $150,000, $200,000 flying, good condition, nice paint, and the whole bit. So, this is definitely where it starts to get your own fighter jet. That would be awesome. The L29 came out in 54 as a trainer. You gotta, you gotta, you know, baby steps. You get out of the little Cessna 150s and then you step into this bad boy and then you start training for your real bombers. It'll do about 350 knots. It'll get you about 500 nautical miles, and it has a rate of climb of 2,755 feet per minute. Yeah, it's definitely on the lighter side of the jet trainer. Uh, so, you know, eh, I think we can do better than this. Super surprising to me that looks pointy and fast and is relatively, you know, I say cheap, it's still $300,000 or, or so, is the Aero L39 Albatross. The Aero L39 Albatross is a high performance jet trainer developed in Czechoslovakia by Aero Voodoo Chudi. It's like a voodoo to do and designed during the 60s to replace the L29 it is primarily a trainer aircraft but still it looks like a fighter jet and it was exported to pretty much every place around the world for this bad boy you're looking at a two-seater aircraft because it's trainer it's meant to have the student and instructor uh, 7,600 pound empty weight, 10,000 pound max weight. We've got a uh, turbofan engine putting out just under 4,000 pounds of thrust, so yeah, it's a little light on that. It's also a little light on the speed, 400 knots. That's still pretty fast, but for a fighter jet, I'm expecting a little something extra. We're looking at 590 nautical mile trip, which would not even make my trip unless I had the external fuel tanks on it. 4,100 feet a minute climb rate. All right, frankly, if I'm honest, it looks really, really cool, but it is most definitely a trainer. For a jet world, it's kind of slow. You get 
some of these other, uh, like a Citation CJ4 has got a 4,500 foot per minute climb rate on it. So, just saying, you know, just saying this one's a trainer. Still cool looking. And I would still definitely have it. And for the money, I mean, 250 grand, 300 grand, you could have a fighter jet. That's the bargain of the century. And for 250 grand, you could have the stars and stripes. That's cool. 1952 North American F86. And this is definitely got the FU201 going on. Yeah, that is a fantastic film number. I love this thing so much. That is old school Americana. North American F-86 Sabre. Sometimes called the Sabre Jet. It's a transonic. We gotta be politically correct these days. We can't call it subsonic or supersonic. It's a transonic fighter jet from North American Aviation. Swept wing. It was made to combat the MiG-15 during the Korean War. Uh, it was considered one of the best and most important fighter aircraft of the war. Highly rated in comparison with the other fighters. North American Aviation are the same people who made the awesome and iconic P-51 Mustang during World War II. And then after the war, the Navy wanted the first fighter which was the FJ-1 Fury and it was basically a uh, straight wing derivative P-51 with a jet engine on it and then they wanted something a little faster I know how you feel the FJ-1 with some mods then became the XP-86 to be lighter and way faster than the Fury with an estimated top speed of 582 miles an hour. They could carry up to 2,000 pounds of bombs, including napalm. Yeah, that stuff. During Korea and Vietnam. Not the nicest stuff in the world to use. I wonder if Antifa knows about that. We probably shouldn't tell them. Don't worry, they're not going to be watching this video. It contains educational material. Anyway, firing a 20 millimeter cannon at 1,200 rounds a minute. The F-86 had a short run because of how fast other jets were being made and other fighters were being made across our uh, the enemies and allies. It quickly went to the wayside and it was pretty much out by 1965. fly the McDonnell Douglas A4F Skyhawk 2, a single-seat, light-attack jet, versions of which have been operational throughout the fleet since 1956. This A4C Skyhawk is pretty, pretty legit plane, a real fighter, not a trainer. It was got this one for sale here for a paltry 1.3 million. The A4 Skyhawk, a rugged breed proving once again in the skies over Southeast Asia its reputation as one of the most valuable tactical aircraft now in service. Skyhawks, first line light attack aircraft for the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps, capable of delivering all tactical weapons. Operating from land bases and from offshore carriers, the Skyhawk has repeatedly demonstrated its ruggedness and versatility as a ground support aircraft performing a large percentage of all Navy and Marine attack missions during several years of combat. Lieutenant Smith makes the approach for his first actual carrier landing. With a firm hand and steady nerves, he lands like a professional. You can buy a gnat 
255 grand. That is pretty good. According to this thing right here, she'll do 600 knots and 48,000 foot ceiling. How much fun is that? And it's a two seater. There you go. You get the job done with that bad boy. The Nat originally was a British fighter. It came out to be a fighter, but then they you know, were like, hey, it's called a Nat. So we can't have a fighter jet that's a Nat. So they moved it to a trainer. Now, if they would have called it a Yellow Jacket or a Wasp or, I mean, even a Horsefly, then it might have made it as a fighter jet. And if you had a whole bunch of them together, would it be a Swarm? What would, I don't know what that would be. 636 miles an hour, Mach 0.95, and you're looking at 10,000 feet per minute climb. That is fantastic. What I really love about it is the roll rate on this thing. It will do a full 360 degree roll in less than a second. And the Nat barely makes it into the fighter category because it was only said to have had a 230 millimeter cannons on it and sometimes a rocket or a bomb just for testing but it ultimately ended up just being a two-seater trainer so you know it's still a fighter jet in my book so this makes the list what is this it's a whole fleet of fighter jets hey Gaddafi this is what you needed man two million bucks a pop and they'll give you a Buy one, get one free discount. The BAE Systems Hawk is a British single engine jet powered advanced trainer aircraft. First flown at Dunsfold, Surrey in 1974 as the Hawker Siddeley Hawk. Or Diddley Squat? What is that? British Aerospace and BAE Systems. Low cost combat aircraft. The Red Arrows used them as a display team, and it is still in production. Empty weight of 9,880 pounds with a 6,600 pound useful load. A Rolls-Royce Turbo Mecha Adur turbo fan with a Fadec. That's pretty fantastic. Produces 6,500 pounds of thrust. The max speed on this bad boy is Mach 0.84, which is 638 miles an hour. Has a range of 1,360 nautical miles. That means I could do my trip from here to Ohio in about an hour. That's not bad. And still have some gas. It'll do 9,300 feet a minute for climb and has a surface ceiling of 44,500 feet. Armament, and it's on the light side. You got uh, one center line or two wing pylons for 1,500 pounds. It's got five hard points. Throw a couple of sidewinders on those bad boys or uh, a couple of Umbani or Al Tariq. I don't even know what that is. In the comments, throw down what in the world those things are. And you can even put a 30 millimeter Aiden cannon on this thing. All right, that's that's legit. That's pretty cool. There you go. You get a BAE Hawk or a whole fleet of them. Start your whole air force. It is a supersonic jet fighter for 250 grand. Gold medal winner for the best fighter jet for the dollar is the Comrade MiG-21. And I happen to know that this one is for sale right now for just under $250,000. You could sell your house and have a fighter jet. My favorite part about it is this one is currently flying, certified, 100% ready to go. Just throw some gas in it, throw your helmet on, and go flying. It was a single pilot. Max takeoff weight was just over 20,000 pounds. One Tomansky R25-300 after-burning turbojet. That's just fun to say. 
and when you put the beans to it, it gets 15,000 pounds of thrust, a max speed of Mach 2.05. Oh man, that's fantastic. <laughs> You gotta land this plane faster than my Cherokee can go at 160 miles an hour. That is the best money you can ever spend on an airplane. That that's that is fantastic. And by the way, these are still being used like six decades after it came out. They're still being flown today in other wars. And the first flight was in 55. It truly came out in 59. And the people who are using it primarily, the Soviet Union, Indian, Croatian, and Romanian Air Forces, they made almost 12,000 of these airplanes. Here's a fun fact. The cabin is pressurized and air conditioned. The SK-1 ejection seat is connected with the canopy and when it ejects, it makes a capsule around the pilot so he doesn't get torn apart whenever he ejects at supersonic speeds. And then right after the ejection, the capsule opens to allow the pilot and the parachute to come out and him to come down. When you're really close to the ground and you eject, you might have some issues with that. Just don't eject close to the ground. Be high up when you eject. It seems like this MiG-21 was used in all the battles. I mean, it was in the Indo-Pakistan War, the Kargil War, Vietnam, in the Egypt-Syria-Israel conflicts, the Syrian War, the Libyan-Egyptian War, Iran-Iraq War in Libya, and then all over Africa, Angolia, Congo, Yugoslavia, Romania, Bulgaria, Jolly. It's used all over the place. This is like your Toyota pickup of fighters. That's the ultimate redneck fighter jet right there. It's old school. It's still being used. It's got a funny looking nose. And it's really fast. Oh. Speed is life. Dude, check that out. It's an F4. How awesome is that? Oh, ooh. Look at that. Oh, it's got bombs and everything. And for the bargain price of 2.95 million, it could be yours. <gasps> Worth every penny world's only privately owned F4 Phantom. Super Sonic! It's at 15 world record in-flight performances, an absolute speed record, and altitude record. Oh, and some of them even had little foldy wings on it. It climbed all the way to 98,557 feet with Commander Lawrence E. Flint Jr. He got that thing moving to Mach 2.5. That's 1,650 miles an hour. And then in September of 1960, it averaged 1,216 miles an hour over a 311 mile closed circuit course. This F-4 Phantom is a tandem seat fighter bomber designed as a carrier-based interceptor to fill the U.S. Navy's fleet defense fighter role. Innovations in the F-4 included an advanced pulse Doppler radar and extensive use of titanium in its airframe. Despite imposing dimensions and a maximum takeoff weight of over 60,000 pounds, the F-4 has a top speed of Mach 2.23 and an initial climb rate of over 41,000 feet per minute. That is nuts! 
it is capable to carry 18,650 pounds of weapons including air-to-air, air-to-surface missiles, unguided and guided, and my favorite, thermonuclear weapons. There's MiG 17s, MiG 19s, a bunch of MiG 21s show up, and now a MiG 29. I mean, check this thing out. If you got an extra two and a half million bucks, you could have a serious piece of kit. You know, I'm I'm not a Russian, but those Russians, they're like the rednecks of the globe. I mean, you can you can buy one of their elite later model fighter jets. And here in America, land of the free, home of the brave, where can you buy an F-15 Eagle? I don't think so. But you can buy a MiG-29, which is basically their version of that. Oh, I don't totally buy that. I wonder if you have to get special permission whenever you're flying to make sure they don't send the Air Force out to shoot you down. <laughs> if you're flying that thing around. MiG-29, you're looking at a single pilot, so you got one seat in this bad boy. And they're looking at just shy of 40,000 pounds for a max takeoff weight. They can hold 7,700 pounds of fuel. And they can burn through all that in about an hour. Top speed, 1,500. 100 miles an hour that's Mach 2.25 and you can go a whopping 770 nautical miles this thing really drinks some gas man. on rate of climb of 65,000 feet per minute wowzers most of them had the Kirmov RD33 turbofan basically that's 50 kilonewtons of cushion or 11,200 pounds of thrust in each one and when you burn on them put on the taps and kick that afterburner in you're looking at 18,000 BTUs pushing you <laughs> this thing can handle over 9 G's and you can basically strap whatever you wanted to strap on that sucker uh, get a 30 millimeter cannon you can put the missiles, you got three pylons out there, uh, inboard, you got gas tanks, rockets, bombs, guided, unguided, and pretty much anything you wanted to put out there. You know, the MiG-29s are not known for their safety record. They showed up at the Farnborough Air Show in Britain in 88, and the next year they were out there at the Paris Air Show showing off, and yeah, they, they crashed it. And then a couple years later, there was another crash at an air show where a couple of them, you know, ran into each other and didn't yield. Uh, so they, uh, they they don't have the best flight record for showing off. And when the Soviet Union went bust, because they printed out more money than they could pay back, hint, hint, they basically just had a yard sale and all these other countries went and bought them up. 30 other nations are operating those things, and even still today they're being used. There is the British Aerospace FA-2, also known as the Harrier. And I think that was a requirement for the men who had to fly this thing, is they had to have Harrier chests than anybody else. The British Aerospace Sea Harrier is a naval short takeoff and vertical landing, vertical takeoff jet fighter, reconnaissance and attack aircraft, and they were used from the 80s all the way up into 2006. And India, who got them just a couple years after they came out, was using them all the way up to 2016. Here's your fun facts. It's a single pilot, 
has a wingspan of 25 feet 3 inches. That's 7.7 .7 meters for all you metric people that haven't caught up to us yet. And then the empty weight is 6,616 kilograms or for us Americans that's 14,585 pounds. You have a max takeoff weight of 26,000 pounds. Fuel capacity 757 gallons has a Rolls-Royce Pegasus 106 vectored thrust turbofan engine capable of producing 21,500 pounds of thrust Woo -wee. with water injection. We can cruise along at 711 miles an hour, just a smidge under the Mach 1. Uh, you can go about 460 miles or 400 nautical miles. If you're brave enough, you can pull 7.8 positive G's and roll it over and 4.2 negative G's out of this thing. It'll do 50,000 feet per minute for its rate of climb. That's, that's almost as good as uh, my Cessna 150. You can strap some missiles to it, some rockets, a couple of 30 millimeter cannons on that bad boy, some bombs, uh, even some reconnaissance, you know, your GoPros, it'll, it'll pretty much put whatever you want on there. From Russia with love. Oh, look at that. A Sequoia, or however you pronounce that, SU-27B Bravo. In Utah, of course. All this crazy stuff would be in Utah somewhere. And yours for the bargain basement price of $8,950. Oh, that. That's my favorite one. And this one says it can be demilitarized unless justification can be provided. Yeah, it's called the Second Amendment. Hana! America. <laughs> one pilot, you got a max takeoff weight of 67,000 pounds. You got two of those uh, Saturn turbofan engines, and they can push out almost 30,000 pounds of thrust. 1,600 miles an hour, yeah, that's, that's not bad. And you can go almost 2,000 nautical miles. Nine Gs, you got a rate of climb of my favorite stat, 59,000 feet per minute. Um, yeah, so that's straight up. The service ceiling is 62,000 feet, so if you pointed the sucker straight up and hit the gas, You'd get all the way from ground to your max service in a minute, one minute. That, that's, that's fantastic. That's awesome. This, this is legit kind of stuff. Pablo Escobar, you need to step up your game. I mean, you got billions of dollars being eaten by rats over there, and you could be buying fighter jets. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Texas, here you go. This is what you guys need to get whenever succession from the Union happens, you need to throw a handful of these bad boys on the on the tarmac. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what to say about this other than it's awesome and I want one. The SU-27 entered into service in 1985 through our comrades, the Soviet Union. And the primary role was a long-range air defense against our F-14 Tomcats and the F-15 Eagles. They designed this SU-27 to be similar to the MiG-29, just bigger. Because why not? Bigger is better. Let's do everything really big. And the, uh, the wings, you'll notice they blend into the fuselage and the leading edge extension. That nice swept wing and a crop delta. Oh, yeah. It was their first operational 
fly-by-wire control system, which makes it a really agile aircraft and controllable even at super low speeds. And you'll notice at air shows the uh, maneuverability, and it has this thing called a Cobra, where it pitches up all the way up, and then it can go all the way back down. It's it's nuts. Just watch this. It's crazy. And a list of some of the countries using the Su-27 are Angolia, our friends and family over in China, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia.